Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of 123 CMMC. My name is Dana, and my guest today is Alan Falota. Falota. Piloto. Piloto. That's nice. It's Italian. Italian. I'm Italian, too. Is that right? Yes, yes, Mantilla. Yes. Right. Bueno. Yep, there's my name there. Okay, so we are going to talk about a great topic today that I'm excited to get into, and I really like a lot of these questions. So we're going to talk about digital forensics today. So our first question out of the gate is going to be, how has digital forensics changed in the last 10 years? Well, it has changed quite a bit. I would say it has probably uh, easy to say it's merged into two fields. So my background is with the policing in, in Canada, with the National Police there, the RCMP. And uh, so when I started working there, it was just one office. And, you know, just kind of really, I was lucky to get in there when it kind of started about 10, 15 years ago. And so, you know, as, as things develop with the internet and cybercrime, as they call it, um, there was really um, sort of a crossroads where, you know, examining a computer hard drive or a cell phone was not quite the same as uh, crimes that were happening online. Like, uh, you know, they talk about the, sci um, the dark web, you know, people doing uh, drug trafficking and selling guns online and these kind of things. So um so over the years plus you know cyber attacks and ransomware i mean that didn't exist 15 years ago really for as far as uh, policing was uh, concerned so uh, as time went by there was really this uh, this shift to sort of divide the two uh, the two fields so the the classical i call it the classical digital forensics examination of computers cell phones and then the cyber crime and then who who handles the cyber crime is it the digital forensics unit or is it the, the, the drug unit or the fraud unit? You know, if a fraud unit uh, has a, a, a cyber crime, who handles it? Who investigates it? So uh, one of the great things that uh, some years ago, somebody, and I, I, I forget the name, but somebody came up with this great uh, concept that, you know, the difference between traditional crime and cyber crime is, is if, if the internet was a light switch and you can turn off the internet with a light switch, Okay, anything that you can do with the lights off, with the switch off, the internet off, this is a classical crime, like frauds, you know, drug trafficking, those kind of things. But if, if you cannot commit the crime when the switch is off and the internet's off, then uh, that's a cyber crime. So that really became the sort of the, the standard for, for separating the two fields. So now in, in policing in Canada, anyway, it's, it's considered you know, there's your digital forensics units and then your cybercrime unit. Sometimes they can work in the same office, but they, they sort of work independently. That's a really, I like that with the switches off, it's one kind of crime. If the switch is on, it's another kind of crime. That's a great way to ex I know. I, somebody, uh, some really smart person came up with it. I don't <laughs> take credit for that, but uh, I like it and I, I like to use things at work, so. Yes, absolutely. That's a great one. All right, yeah. so how is computer forensics different than mobile forensic? This I'm very curious about, the answer to this question. Yeah, so uh, again, over, over time, things have changed a little bit so that, you know, you have the old flip phones mm -hmm. were quite uh, quite simple devices, really. And uh, as time goes by, I think everybody now is pretty much uh, convinced or I don't have to convince anybody that a mobile device now is, is, is uh, like a mini computer. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in Canada, uh, the law, uh, the criminal code uh, under that law a mobile device is a computer mm -hmm. so when you're writing your search warrants and you're writing your authorizations and all those kinds of things and for all intents and purposes a, a mobile device is a computer now however they operate differently because of the platform that they're on the the operating system obviously is different and uh, so they operate differently um, so technically you need to treat them differently uh, the big thing is encryption. Um, you know, although you can have encryption in computers, you know, usually computers are not encrypted by default. But mm -hmm. these days, especially with Apple, you know, uh, Apple devices, Apple mobiles, encryption is on by default. So you need to pay specific attention to uh, to that, and it's going to behave, and you need to analyze it differently. But uh, there, there's a lot of uh, crossover now. And so, um, you know, being a, uh, it's not strictly a computer forensics or mobile forensics. It's, it's more, now we call it, that's why it's called digital forensics now, because it handles all, you know, tablets, uh, 
you know, smart watches, all, all the new devices, uh, it's all kind of integrated now, you know, even fridges are going to have, uh, or have uh, internet. So it's, it's all uh, becoming more, uh, more, uh, kind of not the same devices, but the same types. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I was going to mention, um, I'm having a blank right now, but, uh, yeah, for well, delete. For deleted files and also yes. for deleted files for mobile devices and computers, they're handled a little bit differently. So that takes us into our next question, which we wanted to ask about is, you know, when it, when information or data is deleted, is it like gone forever, forever and ever? So that's the classic uh, the, the classic question that's uh, often comes up in court and is very important with, you know, clients, clients phone and they're always wondering, well, you know, can you can you recover uh, uh, deleted files? And so, in digital forensics, usually the answer is it depends, and, and it's true. It's it seems like an easy answer, but it is true. It depends on what kind of device you have. If you have a laptop or a desktop, or if you're running Windows or Mac OS or Linux, it depends. If you're it's a mobile device, uh, if you have a tablet, if it's an Android device or an Apple device. Um, it really depends. And so, um, you know, Apple devices, again, they, they're pushing for security and, um, they've wanted to take over from Blackberry. You don't see Blackberries much anymore. Blackberries were very secure. Apple's trying to, you know, they've wanted to move into that, uh, business, uh, uh, security field. So they've made their devices very secure, including encryption and making deleted files, uh, very difficult to recover. Now, that being said, uh, sometimes it is easy to recover deleted files. Sometimes it's impossible. But what happens is that um, with someone with the right training and tools, uh, you can actually find that many files that were deleted, the user deleted them, but you actually have multiple copies of the same file on a device. So if you're talking about a mobile phone, for instance, you know somebody deletes a picture, they're like, okay, that picture's gone. Yes, but if you send that picture in an email or you send it through an app like WhatsApp, or if you if you move that picture around, th- there will be actually multiple copies of the same picture. So, uh, you know, people think they've deleted stuff. And yes, sometimes they've deleted, but there's multiple copies because the operating system requires those copies. So it's actually, you know, ha- there's good um, good possibilities of recovering the image it may not be the the original image but it, you can recover a copy so th- sometimes it's pretty good for that well it's gonna be interesting to see down the road how this winds up affecting the legal system so mm. you know if like a criminal deletes something and how many years back can they go and try to find this and i don't know how this plays out now in the court system and i know that you know there's been crimes committed and the fbi wanted to get into someone's phone or something along those lines so it's going to be interesting to see how you know canada and the us how they handle these things vulnerabilities remediated businesses today face a number of cybersecurity challenges from compliance requirements and third-party risk to skilled resource shortages ransomware and alert fatigue at vulnera we recognize these challenges and offer solutions to do the heavy lifting Vulnera empowers organizations with security solutions that perform continuous asset discovery, vulnerability assessments, and remediation validation in a single pane of glass. So your team can focus precious time on what matters, remediation. Vulnera.com. Vulnerabilities remediated. You know, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, tools... Tools are getting better at recovering uh, information uh, for sure. And uh, also the other thing is uh, there's their clouds, you know, because of the cloud, people are using the cloud. So even though they've deleted the phone, even sometimes, you know, you can throw your phone into a river if you're, if you commit a crime with it. And, and but if it's, if it's got a backup on, on the cloud, you know, oftentimes the investigators, I'm always reminding them, you know, have you checked the cloud? You know, uh, there's ways to, to access the cloud and get some backups or get some copies of, of the evidence of the messages uh, or, or whatever. Uh, you can also approach, uh, you know, the, the internet service providers or the, you know, if somebody's with Google or, or Microsoft, you know, you can actually go directly to them to get copies of emails, if you, but you need the legal authorization for sure for that. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, interesting stuff. Okay, so here, what is the difference between digital forensics and e-discovery? Yeah, so when you're working with uh, law offices, law firms, uh, you know, they refer to e-discovery, which stands for electronic discovery. And uh, they will tell you that it's, it's, an, it's an old term now because everything's electronic, but it's, okay. it's very well known, so they, they still use it. Um, and, you know, in, the, in a criminal world, it's basically just digital forensics. And um, how I explain it is, uh, you know, so digital forensics is e-discovery, includes e-discovery, but e-discovery does not include digital forensics um, per se. And what I mean by that okay. is, you know, like digital forensics is more of a, there's more of a technical scientific um, requirement method to obtain the evidence. And uh, I would say that digital forensics, someone who has the training, they will do a better uh, collection or acquisition of the information. And someone who works with digital, with e-forensics or e-discovery, uh, uh, they may be able to do a, a very good job at analyzing the data, but uh, the data collection, um, they would use maybe more uh, automated tools and not necessarily understand exactly what's going on behind the, behind the scenes, uh, but they'll be able to do a great job at, uh, and there's great software and tools now uh, for e-discovery because of the volume. It's a volume issue. I mean, if uh, if you've got 50,000 emails to go through, um, you know, you don't need to be a full digital forensic examiner to to review those emails. So with some with some training, uh, you, you know, for e-discovery pur purposes, someone can have some, with some training, they, they could use tools um to re to uh, examine that data mm -hmm. but for the collection i really push for having the collection done the the extraction done by a forensic examiner and then it's up to uh, the client to decide if they want to use you know do the examination themselves or have the forensic examiner do it Okay, you know, else that ties into too is that you know the space. So let's say you know, for example, Verizon. You know, they're they're keeping everybody's text messages. Well, eventually they they've got to get rid of them. You know, because it just becomes more and more and more data that they have to store. So there there must be some parameters. I maybe they'll make up their own. However long they want to keep text messages or emails or you know anything along those lines. Is there any guidance with any of that stuff? Well, I think. Uh... I mean, that's I don't I'm not familiar with Verizon, but I would be surprised if they keep everything. Yeah. Um, I think they would probably have, you know, two years. What I've seen is at most two years of data retention is the most you can have. Uh, so I'm not sure about Verizon, but most companies, uh, you know, for a while, uh, some some companies only keep three months, um, you know, because the, the volume again. You know, when you're talking about it occupies space and you need server space or computer space okay. and it's financial issues. Right. So yeah. they, they, they don't keep everything. And, uh, you know, people have talked about laws to force companies to, to keep logs forever. But it, it's actually kind of possible to to keep everything forever. It's, it's just the, the, the amount of vol the volume of data. Is right. just, yeah. Yeah. So, Crazy. You, know, you, need, you need to reach a balance between uh you know uh, the companies uh they need to make money in the end and you need to uh you know have uh, you know your legal purposes uh, satisfied and i you know i think two years is, is usually uh it's actually quite a bit and um it's a good balance i think i would agree i would agree yeah all right so here we go how can digital forensics help us with cybersecurity? so because they're separate people time you know, think of them sometimes as two different fields. And uh, if you don't, you know, if you're doing cybersecurity, you don't need to know anything about cyber or digital forensics. And if you're doing digital forensics, you don't really need to do, but they actually, there is quite a uh, overlap, especially if you've got like an incident. Um, I mean, digital forensics, depending on the training of the person, you can do some prevention, some uh, some uh, testing of the systems, and some, some, you know, when you're working with your, um, you know, disaster planning, uh, understanding digital forensics and how data is recorded is very important. And when you have an incident to investigate the incident, uh, depending on your purposes, if you just, you know, if you just want to get back, uh, 
uh, to work the next day, maybe you don't need a full digital forensics examination. But if you're looking at prosecution or, or lawsuits or those kind of things, uh, you know, the information that we, you will collect uh, as part of the, the, you know, the cyber, the cyber incident, the cyber hack, cyber attack, uh, this will be examined using digital forensics tools, you know, software. And so really understanding both fields uh, really helps you um, to get a successful prosecution or, 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 or lawsuit, um, especially, you know, a lot of, a lot of attacks are done by insider, by employees. And so going through the systems and, and doing imaging, all, you know, imaging the computers used by the employees, these are all the forensic techniques, right? So they, it's really, if you want to have a really, uh, closed case or the best case possible, you need to have both uh, both fields involved at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they're also both very good fields for young people to go into because I think that uh, you know the need for those positions is going to it's it's already you know in high demand and it's going to be even more high demand. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, you know there's not uh, there's not going to be less work. It's it's only right. going to be more work, and uh, so it's a definitely a good field to uh, to go into for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, this was very, very helpful. Thank you very much for all of your awesome information. Is there anything you want to leave us with? Anything else you want to add before we go? No, thanks. I just wanted to thank you as well for uh, for speaking with me today. Yeah. And um, yeah, I also I will mention Canada ha also has a um, a cyber secure um, a certification program. It's not mandatory. Oh, that's good. It's, it's voluntary, but it's uh, I just um, I just came aware of this a few weeks ago. So I find it very interesting. I think companies, small and medium companies, certainly want to look into that. Getting cyber secure, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, getting some, um, you know, uh, for your clients to give you the um, having the the security and the confidence. And, and mm -hmm. I think it's good to have that. So, but yeah, so, but thanks, thanks for everything that you do. Yeah, no problem. I love doing this. So thank you for your time and your expertise and everything. Okay. And Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we hope to see you on the next episode of 123 CMMC. Bye-bye. Good, thanks. Yeah.